Hello everyone, Dark of All Trades here. Today, I'm going to address a video on a channel called The Armory. This video is entitled, One Question Atheists Can't Answer. Well, let's see if I can answer this one question. Now, believe it or not, atheism is actually the easiest worldview in the world to refute. Four seconds in and he's already showing a fundamental misunderstanding. Atheism isn't a worldview. Atheism is the rejection of one single proposition as true or likely true. That is, the proposition of theism. Some number of gods exist. It says absolutely nothing about what anyone does believe. Even strong atheism or anti-theism, the acceptance of the contrary, that is, that no gods exist, is still not a worldview. It is a single position on a single proposition. Simply googling what is a worldview will allow you to find more information on what a worldview is and you can compare it to the acceptance or rejection of a single proposition and see why they don't align. And this question is devastating if asked to anyone other than someone who has been sent by God. Strap in everyone, prepare to be devastated. Question, by whose authority do you do these things? My friends, that is the question that only God can answer. An atheist comes up to you and says, give me proof that God exists. All you have to do is say, by whose authority are you going to determine the validity of the truth claims that I present to you? What? Is that the actual question? You do know words have meanings, right? When you say validity, that means something. In logic, validity is about the structure of an argument. It means that the argument is set up so that if I accept the premises to be true, then I must accept the conclusion to be true as well. More than likely, he means something closer to the statement validity meaning, that is, it is logical truth if it is true in all interpretations. So, by whose authority am I going to determine if what you are saying is logical truth? I didn't know that authority is needed to determine anything. Oh, I get it. You're a presuppositionalist. The worst kind of apologetics. You presuppose that a god is required for anyone to know anything, and therefore, without a god, there is no truth. A textbook example of begging the question. Premise 1. For truth to exist, god must exist. Premise 2. Truth exists. Conclusion. Therefore, god exists. But let's take his question seriously. The problem with this question is that it presupposes a who without justification. The answer is, I don't need an authority to determine whether something is valid or not, and neither do you. We make determinations on claims all the time without appealing to any god. People who are incapable of conceiving of a god still make evaluations. When a baby hits a button and it makes a noise, the baby likes it, and therefore, sometimes annoyingly, hits it again, and again, and again. The baby determined that hitting a button caused a favorable outcome, so they do it again, causing the same reaction. By whose authority do they like the reaction? Even animals do things like this. Birds make nests in trees, which are safer than building them on the ground. By whose authority do they build nests in trees? They don't need an authority to do so. It is part of nature. Humans are the same way, just more advanced. Or by whose authority are you demanding that I give you evidence that God exists? This is a similar idea, but different enough to allow me to make it its own response. If we are in a conversation, then by the idea of social understanding that you are not going to be so dishonest as to make an assertion and then not back it up when challenged is the authority, you are by no means required to give any evidence for anything you believe in any situation, especially if I just randomly walked up to you and started demanding it. If you are in a formal debate, then you are still not required to back up your claim, but your proposition looks really bad if you don't and people will notice. If you make a claim, you adopt a burden of proof. If I don't believe you, then I can ask you to meet your burden. That is a basic concept. The Bible is riddled with contradictions. By whose authority are you determining what is a contradiction? Again, words have meanings. When the term contradiction is used, it typically means the conjunction of a statement P and its denial, not P. We could go over the myriad of contradictions in the Bible, for example, but that isn't the point. There are objective evaluations which we could make irrespective of whether there is a God or not. The existence of a God has no bearing on whether something is contradictory or not, just based on the definition. And by whose authority are you placing an obligation on me to live my life in such a way that I don't embrace contradiction? Literally no one is doing that. In fact, 
You can find many self-help articles, books, and websites that say you should embrace contradictions. You are free to believe whatever you believe. The problem comes when it affects others. You believe in a god. Since beliefs don't exist in a vacuum, this belief likely affects other aspects of your life, possibly including how you vote. If you are voting and have a viewpoint not based in reality, that could cause harm to others. Causing harm is bad, therefore one should not hold contradictory views. However, you are not obligated to not vote in ways that cause harm. I can't stop you, so no one is placing obligation on you to live your life that way. Have fun! The God of the Bible is a tyrant. How can you believe in such an evil being? By whose authority are you claiming that the God of the Bible is immoral or a tyrant? Claims do not require authority. Even in places where just being an atheist carries the death penalty, one does not require an authority to make any claim, especially that the God of the Bible is immoral. Just like previously, irrespective of whether or God exists or not, we can make evaluations of morality. In this situation, it just depends on what you mean by moral. The atheist becomes the one who determines ultimate truth, what is logical, and what is moral. They make themselves God. I'm pretty sure Satanists make themselves God. Atheists literally don't believe a God exists. Atheists do make determinations on truth, logic, and morality, but we can evaluate them in relation to what those terms mean. What is truth, logic, and morality? If what you mean by any of those involves a god, then we are talking about something else, and therefore not having a meaningful conversation. If to you, truth is whatever a god says is true, then we're using a different definition of the word and need to come up with something else. If logic is based on a god, then you would have to show this rather than just assert it. You would be just appealing to a being you can't show exists. If morality is whatever your god says is good, then of course your god looks good. Comparing anything to itself will always come out perfect. This meaning falls to the Euthyphro dilemma. Either way, no god is required. The response to this idea of morality is, by what standard did you determine that your god is moral? If god tells you he is moral and you believe it because he said it, then you're not making an evaluation. You are no different than a robot. Just accepting whatever you're being fed, that isn't thinking. The problem with this is that you can do the exact same. You say, well, I disagree with you. Now who's right? That depends on the claim. If you're asking about what is true, then we need to define what we mean by true. I rather like another YouTuber named Paula Gia's definition of truth being, quote, a spectrum measuring the extent to which a proposition conforms to reality as adjudicated by predictive power, end quote. Once we agree on that, we can make evaluations. We do it all the time, literally every day. You see, God is the ultimate source and standard of truth, knowledge, wisdom, goodness, justice. Actually, I didn't want to do this, but it makes the point. By whose authority is your God the standard? If your God can appeal to himself as the standard, then so can everyone else. Your God's viewpoint is subjective. Your entire argument seems to be that one cannot appeal to themselves as an authority. If that is the case, then your God can't appeal to himself as an authority, lest you commit the fallacy of special pleading. So, the question is by whose authority do you do this? If it isn't God, then it doesn't matter. So Jesus said in Luke 16 verse 31, Why should I care what the Bible says? You can answer objections with the Bible, and if people reject that, well, they're rejecting the word of God. They're rejecting the ultimate standard of truth. Oh, it's the word of God? How do you know? Can you demonstrate that? Or is that something you just assume is correct? The Bible is the claim, not the evidence. You need to give me a good reason to care about what the Bible says. Otherwise, I can point to other books that say you're wrong, and you would just have to accept them as true as well with the same levels of evidence. Paul the Apostle in Romans 1 verses 18 to 21 states that everyone already knows that God exists. Everyone already knows that God doesn't exist. Same logic. Romans 1.18 is just awful for talking to non-believers. It is kindergarten level theology. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. There's no better way to shut down a conversation with me than to tell me what I think or feel or believe. You don't get to tell me what I believe and I don't get to tell you what you believe, fair? There are breakdowns all over the YouTubes as to why this is bad. See the description for a link to Paula Gia's breakdown as to why people should stop citing it. So the job of the Christian isn't to prove God's existence to people. This depends on the situation. If a Christian makes a claim that their God exists, they adopt a burden of proof. 
to use the Bible against you, quoting 1 Peter 3.15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So, if you care what the Bible says and follow it, which you don't or you'd be in jail, you cherry-pick what you like and ignore what you don't, then it is your job to prove that your God exists. So, does anyone feel devastated by the question? I sure don't. I was typing up my script after watching the video and it dawned on me that he was using basic presuppositional apologetics. That, oh, I get it, you're a presuppositionalist, was literally me coming to the realization in real time. Now, this is just an awful position to take. I break this down a bit more in my Professor Dark Explains Begging the Question Fallacy video. See the link in the description for that one. What did you think? Do you like this answer to the question atheists can't answer? Let me know in the comments if you liked it. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comments and I can consider the direction of this channel. Do you think I was spot on? Let me know. I love comments like that. Do you think I was way off base? Let me know where I went wrong and we can talk about it. I love comments like that. Anyway, as always, hit the like button if you like this and subscribe for more content like this. See you next time and remember, keep learning.